Hello, welcome back to Brenda Sushi Live Noting. Today we're gonna try to explore the updated um, particle nodes in Spreadshop. So if you just search for particles, you will now have this uh, particles mk2. So previously you have particle nodes and there isn't much difference except that um, I think this one can actually um, control the velocity, location, and size. So originally, the, the particle nodes was only to source the, the positions of the particles. So this one actually can do more. You can actually input the velocity and location and size, which is very, very interesting. Uh, yeah, so let's get started. So particles in Spreadshock, you can think of it kind of like a, like a modifier for particles. It's not like you can emit particles or control the particle lifespan yet using Spreadshop. So you kind of need to have a little bit of understanding of Blender basic particle system. Particle update 001. So I haven't looked at it for much yet, but let's explore this anyhow. Have a plane and let's emit some particles. So you basically you need an like a 3D mesh here and then you create new particles and you assign it into this guy. Uh, Blender particle system is pretty basic and it's pretty easy to understand but you need to spend some time um, on it. Basically you at least you, you understand that particles with particles you need some kind of emitter and the emitter you can emit it from vertices or faces or volume. And each particles you can think of it um, have their own lifespan and they can be emitted at the same time or they can be emitted at different times um, at random times and they also have like a lifespan lifetime here so and the particle system also have a start and end time to emit all the, the numbers here by default it's like 1000 particles let's try 100 particles for now and maybe emit all the particle at the same time um, nothing too fancy but you have to know that by default the particles kind of shoot up a little bit because it has this normal push and it's kind of fall fall down because of the gravity if I turn off the normal it will just fall down because of the, the gravity the gravity is uh, this guy if I turn it off the particle is still actually the particles still running and it will do like a collision and stuff um, if we have like coll collision objects but particles is pretty much static if you don't have any like a uh, initial velocity or any fields that affecting particles there are other force field in here but currently let's observe it inside Spherecho because that's a uh, that's uh, what this live noting is for so by default you can actually source the object here you can have multiple particles and kind of source it at the same time as well so we source the particle and then we can use a spreadshop viewer have a look so with spreadshop viewer it looks at uh, looks at the particles and then look at the positions and then it actually generate the uh, um, spreadshop will generate some kind of a positional informations that Spreadshop can actually use. If you just use the um, this particle system that way, you let the particle system to do what it is doing and then Spreadshop is just sourcing the the particle position. You can simply do that because um, let's say you just plug it into the matrix, now you have like 100 particles. It's doing nothing though, but you can easily plug in things like box and you can have like instance inside Spreadshop. You can randomize the position so it's like kind of like a, you can think of it like a particles instancer sort of but of course you can do more uh, whatever you can do inside Spreadshop you can do it from uh, by sourcing the particle data. So on top of that you can uh, actually have uh, you can check the velocity now you can control the velocity that's the that's the new thing and the locations i haven't played much with it what's the location for uh for example we can give it like 
some kind of velocity um, if I use vector in plug this into the velocity and move it up in the z axis 0 0 1 that means the particles will actually move up so that's uh, that's pretty interesting for 50 frames and then the particle disappear I need to increase the the lifetimes make it 250 and yeah let's leave it leave it like that so it's kind of okay the, uh, we probably need to currently we just do like a random explorations at some point we have to understand what is really like velocity what is the speed uh, I think the velocity can change um, over time but speed is constant um, I can't remember the theory but let's say I'm giving it like one in here okay one in X and one in Z now it's moving that way nothing so exciting I wonder if I if I'm changing this over time so it's it's affecting the particle as well and particles you can think of it like particle is uh, like a points that's being influenced by outside force sometimes it has a mind on its own and each particle is quite individual uh, but you, ha you have full control of it if you plug in like random vector just one random vector it will I think all the particles will move in one random position but if now we have we actually have 100 particles right so if we have 100 random vector position plug into the velocity each particles will move in random position move in the random directions I mean and um, yeah so I think I believe that's the velocity is more or less the same unless you randomize the velocity by multiplying it so it wasn't it wasn't too in, uh, it's not so interesting but you can of course you can plug in like a vector turbulence perhaps so vector turbulence require like a vertices input and the output is also a vector so you can apparently do this combo. Uh, this is the example that's uh, shown by Spreadshop developer when this node being created. So this is just a. Apparently we can plug in the the position of the particles, and then the output can goes into the velocity, and then we can also source the position once again. And now let's check the results. So now. The particle moves in a more in a more interesting fashion still kind of moving in the in one direction like that actually we have we have a random vector over here maybe maybe if we have like a, a single value like in the z axis let's see what's gonna happen so everyone like each particle still kind of moving that way so not particularly interesting yet maybe we can control the strength of it I don't know maybe I should plug this into the locations so it's kind of doing that maybe it's wrong don't do that velocity goes in here and noise goes into velocity not interesting location no, I think it's the location location goes into the the turbulence and the output goes into the velocity but we can use vector math and kind of controlling the result multiplying the velocity let's see let's have a look increase it over here or reduce it so reducing it is affecting the, the point somehow and you can increase it over here so now the motion is a little bit a little bit more interesting they behave they're behaving more like a like a boy it's actually it's a like bunch of points that's kind of going through the vector turbulence force so it's kind of interesting it's not like a typical particles 
if you actually zero this out um, somewhere if I'm not wrong if we actually just give it a zero velocity somewhere the particle will just stop moving uh, velocity let's say if we if we emit more particles and then uh, offer 100 frames slightly more interesting because they kind of moving traveling through the turbulence come somewhat is kind of moving in the if you imagine there's like a force in the x y and z it's kind of moving that way somehow that way don't know why maybe because of the original the original value here if I give it like minus one see it doesn't have any effect somehow if I change this it doesn't have any effects which is pretty pretty unuseful hmm. so in initial velocity it doesn't really matter location I don't think location has any effects either so that's actually kind of with this setup particles kind of doing nothing maybe don't do that kind of interested with the size though the size of particle okay it's kind of doing that um, fairly interesting maybe I can change the amplitude here no too fast frequency less frequency kind of actually kind of like this motion We can actually affect this uh, based on current positions. We can add like a vector noise in here and then kind of get a different result. See, like the particle is doing what it's doing, but the, on top of that, sphere chalk also, the points is kind of being affected. So it's a bit weird. Uh, um, we can use vector math, kind of mix the position of the particles mixed with the noise maybe we get something that's more interesting see the particles kind of doing what it is doing but on top of that look at this the white color which is the sphere of points is also doing like a noise on top of that so that can be interesting and you can you can definitely use things like um, KD3 closest edges so it's always like a interesting to look at spider web yeah I don't know the for now it's just um, it's all a bit more or less like experimentations but still you can you can kind of instance objects with this guy if I let's say we are if we are using like the circles so we plug the positions and then kind of okay we have like 1000 positions here like a transformation we can use circle and plug this guy in there and we have we actually have triangles because we set it to triangles but you can randomize this so from triangles you can have more or less so it's become like a circle you can definitely randomize this uh, this instance objects and each one of these instance objects are actually like a real 
like a real objects they're not just um, not just instance they are real data and you can you can kind of use a UV or something that to affect this to like kind of connect all of them into a single objects you can do a lot uh, you can for example rotate it randomly you can scale it randomly as well do all kind of stuff give it like a thousand now each one of them have like different scaling I want it like rotation something like that a little bit more interesting you can randomize the radius and also do all sort of stuff so by doing that you have um, like a live instancing it's, it's not like just normal instancing you can generate anything in Spreadshock and you can instance it very quickly and for the instant as well you can have a like a variation so this is quite quite powerful I'm kind of curious with this uh, the size thing if I just give it random size maybe it will affect the particles and the particles instance will be affected um, if you know the real particle instancing instancing in blender is actually quite powerful it's very very fast if you even if you have like an object that's a uh, high resolutions and you instance it blender can handle it like uh, even it's like a uh, very very high res and heavy but instant is really the key if you if you want to have like a like a complex kind of complex design currently we are just using a, this a circle or hexagon but i guess yeah this is okay for the beginners for a, like a beginning explorations of this uh particles mk2 give it a try and look at this we have objects velocity location size you can do a lot actually you can perhaps use a multiple particle system and kind of mix it in spreadshop and let's see what you can come out with but anyway this is uh, like an, a quick look again at particle systems um, in spreadshop it's like a modifier for particles basically so give it a try experiment with it and let me know if you have any suggestion or any question um, thanks again for tuning in and I'll see you in the next video.